<laughs> yeah. Okay, ready? So what have we studied in chapter two? That's it. Nothing else, right? Uh, we studied limits. We studied the difference quotient. We studied that the derivative is nothing else but the limit of the difference quotient. And now we know how to calculate using the definition f prime of x and f prime of a. Okay, chapter three deals with differentiation rules. So chapter three makes our life easier. I would like us to uh, look at uh, one function that we already know the answer for. What is f prime? This for this function. What is f prime? Very good. One over two the square of x. But now let's uh, also look at f of x equals x squared. And you could say, are you going to do this again and again and again? No. Just for a couple of functions, I promise. So we can see how the uh, formula or the definition works. OK, so um, with a uh, definition, I have limit as age approaches 0 from x plus age everything squared minus x squared over h. So I'm applying the formal definition f prime of x uh, as the limit of the difference quotient for x squared. OK. What I would like to do is factor the numerator. And you'll tell me what you want me to do. You want me to factor or just expand? Two things have to happen still x terms without age have to go away. Age in the denominator will go away. And the final answer will be clean. No age in it because of the limit. So you want to factor the top or expand? Very good. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared divided by h. Of course, these two go away as expected. The next step is also expected. What is that next step? Very good. Thank you very much. So these two go away. And now I'm ready to write the uh, derivative of x squared forever. Indeed. So here's what we do. That's not a good color, sorry. So this was an example that does not enforce the rule, but I just want you to um, have the idea. Okay. If x squared prime is 2x, what about x to any power? Can you come up with an idea here? To which power? Yes. So we subtract 1 from the power. I know it's not very obvious with x squared, right? It's not obvious. But for example, x to the fourth prime, what would that equal to? Right, 4x cubed. 4x cubed. OK, so um, that's uh, one thing that I wanted to present, which is the power rule. Um, what if I need to differentiate a constant times a function? A constant times a function prime. What do you think I am going to get? Like with a limit, because f prime is a limit. Same thing. From a limit, we take the constant in front of the limit, right? The same thing with f. If it's a constant times a function, that's and we differentiate. It's the same thing with the definition uh, with the uh, limit laws. For example, three x to the third prime. What will this equal? Very good. That's it. And, 
of course, we can go on forever. I want to look at the negative power. Let's say x to negative 3 prime. There is no change. What will I have to write? Correct. Perfect. But please, final answer, no negative exponents. OK. Um, here is another rule for you. If I have a sum of functions and I differentiate, this is the same with the limit law. And if I have a difference of two functions and I differentiate, can you come up with a rule? Of course you can. And the answer is or negative if it's a difference, of course. Finally, before we look at examples. And yes, you can use the rules to check your answer on Wednesday if you want. But um, I'm not going to get to the quotient rule and the product rule yet today. We'll see. OK, so here's a function e to the x. This function and maybe sine or cosine later, a little bit later, I would like us still to prove them using the definition, like we did with x squared, like we did with the square root of x. So now we already have um, a couple of, um, or a list of known, like we, we have seven indeterminate cases and we looked at three of them. We still have four to look at. So I'm just going to start a list of derivatives. So we know this one already. We know x to the nth power is n x to n minus 1. And I want to add here e to the x prime, and we will see what it is. Even if you know it, that's fine. Hold on to your thought for a second. OK, so can anyone give us the definition um, of for this one, for e to the x? I would like us to determine f prime of x. Of course, it's the limit as h approaches 0. Can anyone dictate? Yes, you will say f of x plus h minus f of x over h, but I want you to plug it in already. I'm lazy to write it twice. My cheap markers are drying out. Very good. Minus e to the x divided by h. Excellent. Great job. OK, we can't get away from limits. You'll see in Calc 2, you can't get away from them. It's hard. Quite a lot. OK. So what do you think I'm going to do now? Of course, there is nothing to do with it to the denominator. So look at the numerator and say, I think you're going to do blah, 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 blah. Sure. Say it again. Sure. I can't. It's not an equation. Very good point. So if you say x equals, uh, I'm sorry, um, 2 to the x equals 5, Excellent, excellent question. So I'm going to write it here. If you say 2 to the x equals um, 5, yes, I will agree. Natural log of this number is natural log of that number. I put x in front. I have this, and I divide. Natural log over natu natural log 5 over natural log 2. Perfect. But this one is not an equation. I can't do that. Thank you very much, of course. So let's talk about this. e to a x plus h is the same with e to the x times e to the h. This is an exponential rule that we learned like a million years ago. So a to n times a to m equals a to n plus m. Back and forth. And I need to split it like that. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. OK, so this is limit as h approaches 0, e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x divided by h. Now look again at the numerator and say, I know now you're going to I'm going to what? Indeed. So limit 
as h approaches 0, e to the x, what is left in parentheses? So e to the h minus 1 over h. What is this quantity for this limit? It's a constant. It does not depend on h. If it's a constant, it can wait patiently outside. h is the variable here. It's like 3 or 5 or 10. It's constant. I don't need it. I can wait patiently outside. I cannot, like, I could not show you sine x over x yet. We looked at the graph. I cannot show you um, this limit algebraically yet. I will very soon, but not today. So let's take a look. Let's plug in this function in y equals. And the function is parentheses e to power x, we don't have h here, minus 1, close the parentheses, and divide by x. So it's e to h minus 1 over h. Okay? And I want to determine this limit where? Near what? Excellent. Good. So I'm just going to plug in some numbers. I'm going to start with, of course I know, I know, you don't have to tell me it's an error at zero. Okay, uh, let's say negative 0.5, and let's say negative 0.2, and negative 0 0.00001, and on the other side, 0 0.0001. What do you think? One, indeed. So then, if this limit is 1, what is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. The nicest function on the planet. When it comes to derivatives, the derivative of the function is the function itself. It can be easier than that. It will not get easier than that. Okay, so now we are ready to um, practice. So let's practice this. Would that ever be what we, you asked us to prove? Uh, yes, when we differentiate this, when we determine this limit, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule, but we don't know that yet. I will. Just give me a few. Yeah, I'm not going to wait till chapter 4. I don't think I don't think it's okay. L'Hopital's rule is in chapter 4. No, I'm not going to wait. Promise. Okay. So let's practice. So um, anything, uh, these are problems, differentiate the function. So that's one uh, situation that I would like to look at. Uh, find an equation of the tangent line to the curve, same idea. Uh, for what values or show that the curve uh, has no tangent line with slope 2. That's another situation. Uh, the equation of motion of a particle, and we're asked to determine a few things. Um, we're given an equation, which is called the differential equation because it has derivatives in it. And we are asked to do something. Um, find a function, a cubic function, whose graph has horizontal tangents, blah, blah, blah. There is a ton of different problems here. Um, is Sketch this and sh show whether it's differentiable or not. Uh, at what numbers is this differentiable? Uh, find the values of m and b that make f differentiable everywhere. So a ton of things. But let's start with some examples and then we'll choose anything else you want. Anything. One, two, three. Sixteen. <laughs> That's all you have. You have three seconds to decide. If not, I pick. That is actually a very good remark because till you get into it, sit down and, and practice and see what is easy and what that. Yeah. By simply looking at ten problems, you're not gonna absolutely correct. Okay, so um, h of t. But at this uh, point, we have to uh, just choose something. 
I see a difference of two functions. I differentiate, no problem. So h prime of t, this is what I'm asked to determine. Uh, yes, I will change this into t to which power? Very good, awesome, one fourth, great job. So then h prime of t will be one fourth t to one fourth minus one. You have a quarter, um, and I'm giving you a dollar, so how much uh, you owe me. Very good. And minus four e to t. We don't like negative exponents in the final answer. So this is one over four, the fourth root of t to the third minus four e to t. Let's find the equation of the tangent line. Uh, let's say 34. So for example, um, 32, this, should, this example should not be here. Not in this section. And I can tell you later why. OK, so 34. Uh, y equals x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus x and 1 comma 2. So this is very similar to this problem. in which he took us uh, five minutes to determine this and plug it in and then find us the uh, point, find the slope, etc., etc. But now this is done in a blink because I need to determine. So there are a few notations. One notation will be y prime. The other notation will be dy over dx. This is the Leibniz notation. You don't need to determine and remember the name. But this is the derivative oops, of y with respect to x. Another notation is f prime of x. They all mean the same. Would you mind, I'm sorry, yes. going back to the previous example? Yes, let's go back to the previous example. Yes, let's do that. So I brought the power down and I subtracted one from the power. That's the rule oh. that we discussed a second yes. ago. So um, from one fourth I subtract one to get negative three fourths. One over four minus one is negative three fourths. So then this comes to the denominator, it's the fourth root of t to the third. The denominator is always the index, the power is always the power. The numerator is always the power. Why does nothing happen to the right side of that? Because e to x prime is e to x, the nicest function on the planet. I can't do anything to it. Is that OK? OK, so um, make sure that you put b here, not p, please, Leibniz. OK, so we can use any of these three um, notations. Sometimes we, we will only use this. You will see when, not yet. So which notation do you prefer? You prefer y prime? OK, y prime. So y prime equals 4x to the third plus 4x minus 1. 
bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power, bring down the power, multiply by 2, subtract 1 from the power, bring down the power, and subtract 1 from the power. 1 minus 1 is 0, x to 0 is 1. Or the derivative of x is its slope, negative 1. Okay, so now, at this point, I have to, this is a, a notation, that, which is fine, but this is not the best notation for this. But it's, it's okay, we can use it when x equals 1, because the point is given to us 1, 2, but I have to find the um, slope of the tangent line at 1. So now I say y prime, the derivative, when x equals 1, I have 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7. So then y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, where the slope is 7, and 1, 2, 1, 2. And that will give us, we didn't finish, but that will give us the uh, equation of the tangent line to the graph um, of function f at 1, 2, where the slope turns out to be 7. So as you see, just uh, much easier than all that finding this, the uh, derivative using the definition. Now there is no need, I can apply differentiation rules. So then y minus 2 equals 7x minus 1, and then 7x minus 7, but plus 2 will be, will be plus 5. So this is the, yes. So I have negative 7 plus 2. Oh, yes, of course, of course, yes, of course. That's what I said, but I, I wrote plus. Yes, indeed, negative 7 plus 2 is still negative 5. Unless I say it's positive. How dare you? I'm just kidding. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, of course, negative 7 plus 2 is still negative 5. Good. Any questions on this? Yes, I don't recommend it because this is x cubed. If you want to use the definition, it will take you a, a good while. Because you will have x plus h to the third power. Yeah. So if you don't use the, the, um, the formula for x plus h to the third power, then you have to multiply it three times. Yes, but of course you'll get the same thing. Yes, next question. Can we go to that? How you got the y prime? Uh, 12. I'm sorry, I was differentiating again. Bring down 4, subtract 1 from the power. Bring down 2, multiply, subtract 1 from the power. Bring down 1, subtract 1 from the power. The slope of negative x is negative 1. For linear functions, yes, for linear functions is just its slope. The slope of negative x is negative 1. So when you differentiate, that's one way. We don't really do it like this. So 1 times x to 1 minus 1. This is 0. x to 0 is 1. So that's how you get that x prime is 1. Or just remember moving forward. If you want to write this down, that's fine too. x prime is 1. But now if it's negative x, prime will be negative 1. So that's the slope of negative x. It's a linear function with slope negative 1. x is a linear function with slope 1, so the derivative will be 1. Is that clear? Shawnee had that. Is, was that the negative x the problem? or No, more of like the bringing down 4 and yeah, that's the rule that we just learned. x to the fourth is 4 times x to the third. And if I have a constant, 2x squared, I have to bring it down and multiply by the constant. I still subtract 1 from the power. You will very, very soon get used to it. So we bring down the 2 and subtract 1 from the power. And when we differentiate negative x, we get negative 1. Is that okay? Everyone? Yes? Is that okay? Better? 
Yes. Better? So then we plugged in one because we needed to determine the slope, like we did with the problem half an hour ago, but we had to work hard to find that prime first. So we plugged in one and we got seven. Like in that one, we plugged in negative one and we got two. Or one, one, sorry, negative one. But here I had the derivative in a blink. I didn't have to use the definition. And uh, by the way, the definition um, using this is not on x cubed, but it's on x to the fourth, actually. Because we applied the definition to the function itself. I was looking at the derivative. So sorry about that. So if we want to use the definition, we have to use the definition on x to the fourth. And that's a different story. Much longer. Is everything else okay now? Yes? Okay, perfect. So, um, where am I? Uh, what would you like to uh, continue? Some other problems uh, with um, a piecewise defined function, maybe? Or. Sure. Yes? Okay, very good. So, let's say uh, 67 on page 183. So we have f of x, and we are given x squared plus 1 for less than 1, and x plus 1 for greater than or equal to 1. Is this function differentiable at 1? So the question is asking us if the function is differentiable at 1. Number one, I want to study continuity at x equals 1. Because if it's not continuous at 1, there is no discussion. What will you say if it's not continuous? It cannot be differentiable, correct? Well, very good. So then the limit, as x approaches 1 from the left, does it equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, does this equal f of 1? We'll see in a moment. We are, we are researching that. We are working on it. So what function from the left? Excellent. And from the right, I know I shouldn't ask. Uh, what is this limit? What is this limit? What is the function value? Is this function continuous at 1? Yes, it is continuous. In number 2, I would like to find f prime. Can you please give me the derivative of the first branch? Excellent. For x less than 1, can you give me the derivative of the second branch? For x greater than 1, notice that I did not put the equal symbol yet. I will put it. I will go back and put it in if it's differentiable at that point. If it's not differentiable at that point, I cannot put it in. The function will not exist at that point, the derivative. OK. So, yes? Say it again. So we are differentiating x squared plus 1. When we differentiate x squared plus 1, you bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power. What is the derivative? How, how fast is 1 changing? 0. So that's why it's 2x for x less than 0, or less than 1. And what is the derivative of x? What is the derivative of 1? So that's how we get the 1. Better? Everyone? OK. What did we say about a function that is differentiable at a point. It must have how many tangents? Exactly. Just one. Just one. OK. So if it has two tangents or a vertical tangent, then it's not legitimate. It's not differentiable there. So I want to determine the limit because of 2x when x approaches 1 from the left. And I want to determine the limit of 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. What is this? What is this? OK, so what does this mean? 
when x is smaller than 1, the slope is 2. When x is bigger than 1, the slope is 1. So on this side is 2, and on this one is this side is 1. We're going to graph it in a moment. We don't know the graph yet. We haven't looked at it. But on one side, the slope is 2 of the tangent. On the other side, the slope is 1. Can this function be differentiable at 1? Right? It cannot be differentiable at 1. OK, so now let's look at, um, let's say we don't know that. So let's look at the graph. Because they're also asking us to graph both on the same coordinates, on, uh, one, on, one below the other. Okay, so I hope you agree this function is defined, uh, the function, the original function is defined everywhere. And uh, this is also a review for Wednesday, very good review. So, uh, which is the key value here? I want to graph this function. You're going to have something like this on Wednesday. So, no, no secret there. So, which is the key value for x? 1 indeed. Of course, 0 will always be in the table. To the left, I have a parenthesis. And to the right, I have a bracket. Between negative infinity and 1, I will have to use x squared plus 1. Of course, from 1 to infinity, I will have to use x plus 1. Since the left-hand side is what type of function? Very good. I'm going to use also negative 1, so please plug it in. Please plug in 0. Please plug in 1. Uh, please plug in, you, you should have said, oh, you can't. True, I agree, I can't. But let's plug in 1 on this side, inside the bracket, and let's also plug in 2 and tell me what you get. Good. So obviously, from even from here, I see that the function is continuous. The left limit is 2, the right limit is 2, and the function value is 2. So this function is definitely, as we knew from the beginning, is continuous because we, we test it with a definition. That's another review for Wednesday. This is the formal definition of continuity at the point. We tested that, we knew that, and also we got the same thing. Okay, perfect. So now I'm looking at the derivative. So for the derivative between uh, negative infinity and 1, on, uh, I'm sorry, here, in this territory I have 2x, and in this territory I have 1. And for now, I'm going to just leave it open. See what happens. If these two are the same, then I will put in the number. So from the left, let's say at negative 2, what is the slope? A negative 1 is negative 2, sorry. Uh, what about at 0? Good. Uh, what about at 1? Good. What about at 1 on the other side? So now I'm going to graph both. Please leave enough room under the graph of f of x so we can put in there the graph of f prime. So this will be the graph of f and this will be the graph of f prime. So for f I see a negative 1, 2. I see 0, 1. I see 1, 2 open initially. This is quadratic. I know this is f. But on the other side, I will fill it in. I'll use a different color because I don't want you to, I want you to understand what's happening. So this is 2, 3. So I'll fill it in. So this is the graph of function f. However, something major happens here at 2 for the derivative, right here, at 2. Uh, at 1, I meant to say, of course, at 1. 
Um, the left hand side, negative 2, so negative 1, negative 2, fine. Uh, 0, 0, fine. Uh, 1, 2. This is a derivative uh, of uh, x squared plus, plus 1 graphed, which is 2x, between a negative infinity and 1. And now look what happens on the other side. This is starts at 1 and continues forever at 1. So now you can fill it in with the coordinates of the Cartesian system. Okay. So when the derivative is not continuous, the function is not, that's it. So although the function was continuous, the slope here is 2, but the slope here is 1. My graph is not perfect, my apologies. So here this is the slope is 2, and here the slope is 1. I didn't mean to create a smaller triangle, that's not the issue. The issue is that this is a steeper slope, it's 2, 2 over 1, rise over run. And this one, the slope is 1. So we're going to go back to that thing where you only have 1 tangent. Exactly. That's the reason why there is not only one tangent here. It's filled in. It's continuous. But at this point, there is a tangent that is 1, and there is a tangent that is 2. Therefore, the function is not differentiable at 1, although it's continuous at 1. It does not have a unique tangent. And you can see this from the fact that the derivative is not continuous. So the derivative does not exist. Remember, the derivative is a limit. The tangent has to be unique. The limit here and the limit here have both have to exist and be the same number. So it was deceiving, we thought initially, because it was continuous. But remember, if it's continuous, comma, it cannot have two tangents. This is a corner. It cannot have a cusp or a vertical tangent. And it turns out that it has a corner at that point. It has two tangents instead of one. OK. Um, Find a second degree polynomial. Uh, problem 63, page 183. Find the second degree polynomial P such that, so second degree, such that P of 2 equals 5, P prime of 2 equals 3 p double prime of 2 equals 2. Can anyone give us a the most generic polynomial degree 2? No. It's ax squared plus bx plus c. The simplest one the basic one is this. I agree. But the most generic one, normally it cannot have more than three terms. This is the most general situation. Three terms and A, B, and C are real numbers. OK. Good. So how many variables or unknown very, uh, parameters, if you want, or unknowns we have in this problem? in this polynomial. What what will completely define in a unique way this polynomial? Of course. Three unknowns, A, B, and C. Those are those are the changing, the ones that are changing. 
right? To create more polynomials, as many as you want. So we have three unknowns, three parameters. Good. So then how many equations do I have to come up with? Oh, absolutely three. Good. So let's write three equations. But before that, let's find p prime of x and p double prime of x, which is a derivative of p prime. So can you please differentiate this? And no, not with a formal definition. We're, we're not completely forget about it, but we'll, we will revive it again a little bit later. But now we have differentiation rules. Excellent. Plus? Plus? Plus B. Good. And now please differentiate this one more time for the second derivative, which is the rate of change of first derivative. Say it again? I think somebody said it. Exactly. Perfect. Awesome. So I already have, let's start from the very end. The second derivative of 2 is 2. So what would you, when you plug in 2 here, what do you get? 2a, because you cannot plug it in anywhere. There is no x equals 2. You can plug it in, right? There is no x. You can plug in x equals 2 in a. This is going to be like Good. So, so we're done with the second, with the last one. Now please tell me what you get, what equation you get from the second one. Yes. Plus b equals? Excellent. Well done with the second one. And now we want the first one. For a plus 2b plus c equals, that's it. And of course, we're going to go backwards, back substitution. So you're going to tell me that a is definitely good. If a is 1, you're going to tell me that b is 3 minus 4, which is good. And now we go back to with a being 1 and b being negative, two, negative 1 to determine c. So 4 minus 2 plus c equals 5. And this is 2 subtracted from 5 will be, and here's our polynomial. There is no other that fulfills the given conditions. This is the only one such that p of 2 is 5 p prime of 2 is 3, and p, p double prime of 2 is 2. There is no, you can find another. This is uniquely defined by the given conditions. Any questions? Uh, we bring down the power, we multiply by a, and subtract 1 from the power. A bx prime is just b, and c prime is a constant 0. Then when we differentiate this, we get 2a, and b prime is 0. As I said, it's just the first time, so of course, it's something new. What is Say it again. What are we doing? Um, we're determining uh, a polynomial that, has, uh, that is a unique polynomial that fulfills the given conditions. What are we doing with differentiating? We are finding uh, the rate of change of a function. We are finding, for example, if we are trying to determine p prime of x, we are finding a function that gives the instantaneous rate of change of function p of x at any point where the function is differentiable. You may be interested in determining the velocity. Uh, if the function is the distance, you will differentiate and you will plug in to find the instantaneous rate of a particular, at a particular point. You may be interested in determining, it's a very good question, uh, you may be interested in determining uh, the second derivative, which is the acceleration of a particle with a certain, moving with a certain motion. You find the velocity first, and then if you want to determine the acceleration, then you will differentiate the velocity again. Maybe we should look at a problem like that. Since you're asking, why not? 
I was going to give you the idea, the next step, but why not? It's a very good question. Okay, so here it is. Um, equation of motion of a particle, since I mentioned that, um, is given to us, where s is in meters and t is in seconds. Find the velocity and acceleration as, as function of t. So in order to find the, the velocity, you will find s prime. If you want to find the, the acceleration, you will find s double prime. Find the acceleration after one second. So we will plug in one second. And graph the position, velocity, and acceleration functions on the same screen. There is a calculator symbol there. You want to do something like that? Okay, perfect. It's a very good question. So this is problem uh, 48 on 182. And we are given s. I'm going to write it as s of t with your permission. t to the fourth minus 3t cubed plus t squared and minus t. So remember t is in seconds and s is in meters. And we want to find the velocity and then the acceleration and then the acceleration at 1. And then we can put all those three in the graphing calculator and, and graph all of them. All three at the same time. You said velocity is the, the rate of change of distance with respect to time. If you ask me uh, what is your speed right now, I'm going to say 60 miles an hour. It's the rate of change of distance with respect to time. But you're saying that's, that's prime. Okay. Exactly. So, so double prime. yes, or the velocity prime or s double prime, because the accelerator, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, and indirectly s double prime. So here we have 4t to the third minus 9t squared plus 2t minus 1. That is the velocity. And now um, the second derivative, which is the acceleration, that will be 12t squared minus 18t and plus 2. And then we plug in 1, and that's it. Very good. So a of 1 will be 12 minus 18 and plus 2, which is negative 4 meters per second squared. And this indicates direction, not the value. We're slowing down. Any questions? This would have been back in the day, though, hasn't been trying to figure some out about calculators. You mean um, determining determining what? Like you mean values? The acceleration after one second. So how they determine this without calculus? Without calculators. Oh, without calculators. Hmm. Well, we didn't do anything with the cal Oh, by graphing, you mean? No, this was not a calculation with, uh, with a calculator. There was nothing. I we just plugged it one. So we did not do this with a calculator, although with calculators can do that. Is that what you meant? <laughs> I think what he meant was, was yes? this was this theory around before they would use something like a calculator or absolutely. Uh, so this came in calculators didn't exist. This came in recently. much way before. So way before. These, so all of these theories proved to conform with abacus. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm not really but I'm just saying this goes back a while. It's, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You will be um, surprised when you uh, when we get to Newton's method in chapter four. Okay, I have uh, four minutes left. I'm just going to put two definitions up there, and if we have time, we'll practice. If we don't, we don't today.
So this is 3.2, the product and ratio. Rules, differentiation rules, of course. The product is when you multiply, and the ratio is when you divide. That's okay. Yeah, I, I said, is the ratio the same as the quotient? Yes. Sorry about that. I'm. No, 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 don't worry. Okay, so, in other words, when we multiply two functions, you would not expect that we have to differentiate the first, multiply by the second, and plus the first times the second one prime. Your book presents this in a different order. Use the order you like. I like to keep 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. But they say 1, 2, and then 2, 1, which is fine. Same thing. If you write g prime times f, or f times g prime, is the same thing. But I like this order. I accept any order you like. 1, 2, 1, 2. You decide. Now for the ratio or quotient, we have the same thing, sort of the same thing at the top. 1 prime times 2 minus 1 times 2 prime. But the denominator is not differentiated. It's only the second function prime. And I have two minutes, and I'll show you one example with the quotient. So let's say 2x squared plus 1 over 3x minus 1 prime. The top prime, can anyone give us a derivative of this? Very good. Quantity now, the denominator. I copy the negative sign, I copy the numerator, and I multiply by the de denominator prime. What is this prime? Very good. And the denominator is 3x minus 1 squared. Now you understand that if you are tempted to simplify the 3x minus 1, that, that would be a disaster, right? Do not get tempted. All I have to do is now distribute 12x squared minus 4x minus 6x squared minus 3 over 3x minus 1 squared. And yes, feel free to use and check with the formula if you'd like. If you get to differentiate on Wednesday a quotient, you can.